Uh, hello, hello. All right, hey guys. Um, I'm Anton. I'm from Emerging Tech, and I will be introducing our president and CEO, Gaurav Seth. All right. Am I clipping it? If I can figure this out, right? Yeah, I'm an old school guy, but I'll try this. Can you guys still hear me? No? Is it working? Working? All right. Everyone, I, I'm Gaurav Seth. I go by my last name, Seth. Uh, originally from India. Anybody from India? But I've been here, United States, since 1998. Um, Emerging tech, um, we have a few slides to show you guys, but um, do I just touch the screen to go to the slides or mouse? Okay. Just wanted to first talk about who, we, who are we and why am I here and why did we move here? Uh, Emerging tech is founded and uh, uh, created in the state of Maryland. Uh, that's where I'm originally from, like all the way there. Why did I come here, right? Uh, uh, most of my clients and our works with uh, when we talk about cybersecurity, if you can name any three-letter government agency, NSA, FBI, CIA, DIA, you guys can go on and on. Uh, if you know, you know our government, uh, uh, United States government being number one in the world, cybersecurity is the backbone, okay? If you don't know it, now you know it. Uh, and we, we play a wider role uh, as a company uh, in providing that. We moved our company from uh, Maryland to Gainesville. We're not far from here. We just got our, our first lab and we're still building it. Uh, things are coming a bit slow here. Uh, we were looking for a city and potentially a state that uh, it's developing, not fully developed, right? I. Could have gone to California. There's Silicon Valley already there. The big guys out there already doing it. There's a big market. I was doing great in DC. Uh, uh, University of uh, Maryland uh, was number two, I think, cybersecurity program. So they're doing great. I'm like, we always wanted to do something different. Reason behind this is because of my, my original background, right? Any company that you guys look up or see about, it's always about the, the forefathers, right? The core team, if you will. My background, I'm prior United States Air Force served right after 9-11, uh, it's multiple tenure uh, duty stations, traveling. I uh, uh, Biggest thing I did was I was stationed in Langley uh, Air Force Base in Virginia, and I was in charge of maintaining the entire cybersecurity posture of all the systems in Afghanistan and Camp Victory, Iraq, while the war was going on. So that's like a, this thing, how did we do all that, right? There's a lot of stuff. So because I did all this, I did fun, all that work. Uh, I wanted to come to the city once again that is looking to develop. So we've been talking to multiple universities. We had a state of Texas in our mind. We had uh, Washington State in our mind. And we had Florida. Uh, January, I visited uh, my dear friend Matt over there. We traveled and uh, I sat down with him and came up with a game plan. And here we are. So we just moved the company around. Uh, um, April timeframe, uh, officially. Uh, our first internship uh, from University of Florida came in the summer. And a uh, person like Unheld sitting right here, he's in a second round of internship with us right now. And uh, I am coming here to talk to you more about us, what we do, and uh, hoping that you guys believe in the cause. Uh, what's the overall cause? My overall dream, this is my dream. Everybody has a dream, right? My dream is to become, uh, make the state of Florida the Silicon Valley of East Coast. Can I get a hua or something? Yeah, oh, hurrah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Why is Florida, or why is Florida, what, Florida should not be behind California. What does California has to offer that Florida doesn't? And if you guys are from California, no offense, right? I'm just saying it. Is there anything? There's no reason. Why did, California become, there was an idea. Everything starts with an idea, right? Google started there, Apple, there's a lot of things. So we are not a product company yet. Full disclosure, except what are you talking about? We're not building product. And I'm gonna go through some slides. I'm gonna talk about it. Um, and I'm gonna go through slides fast and uh, then keep the discussion open. I want you to talk, talk about anything and everything else. 
right? Okay, let's get started. Who are we? We focus on uh, uh, many things, but primary focus is on cybersecurity. That's why we're here, number one area. Uh, mobile development, project management, network engineering, and commercial solution for classified. We just have that own category. What the hell is CSFC? What has happened in uh, COVID-19, right? Or people say post-COVID-19, then I say in progress COVID-19, right? We're not really post. I don't know if you're ever going to be post or not. But in this current situation, everybody wants to work from remote. Federal governments have a systems. Uh, if you guys, some of you guys may have worked on them or heard of them. Uh, governments have something known as classified systems. By the way, everything about classified system at the unclassified level, you can Google it. You can type in what are classified system and you can read about it. I promise you FBI and NSA will not come after you. If my government clients were there, they will agree. They won't Google it, read about it. So these classified systems about 15, 20 years ago were behind the dungeon. You have to go through so many locked doors to access them. Uh, over the years, government has been commercializing them and putting it. What we do today, once again, I bought a COVID-19 COVID example. You can access secret and top secret systems from your home. Why should a person have to go drive five hours or go through all the bells and whistles to check that one email for 10 minutes? We live in the days of era of information, right? I need my data. I need my data now. I need to review my data in five minutes. I need to make a decision and move out. So now federal government leaders are walking around mobile phones, iPhone and Android look just like your personal phone. There is no special secret sticker on it, nothing else, but they authenticate to certain layers of encryptions and they get, they're actually looking at secret data on the phone. ET, emerging tech, uh, we make it happen. We integrate the products, we secure them and we protect their data and so on, all right? That's what that is, pretty cool concept. I'm just gonna put all this up and then talk about it. I had to organize just like everybody does, you know, you guys know computers, so computers are also organized in the file system. I had to organize our company into different categories. Uh, we call them COEs, Center of Excellence, Healthcare, Consulting, Cybersecurity, Enterprise Integration. I'm only concentrating today uh, on cybersecurity areas, but of course I have slides for many things. So if you got colleagues who are interested in consulting area or healthcare, there is a cybersecurity arm. Yeah, we're playing with medical device cybersecurity. People think medical devices are secure. Uh, I, I was taught a long time ago, things are only as secure until you're able to review their configuration and validate it. We were taught trust, but verify at all times. Always. I'm, I'm sure you guys probably learn about that in your classes and they talk about it. If I can't validate it, I don't think it's secure. So, uh, but today I'm just going to be focusing on the cybersecurity area. We'll talk, I think we have two slides on uh, uh, threat hunting, incident threat response, penetration testing, and the RMF and so on. Uh, on this slide, anybody knows those terminologies? You guys know cybersecurity terms, threat hunting? Anybody know what that is? Yes? Yes, using incident threat response, pen testing, how they're all different, yes. So I don't have to go to the, I bet you the last one, a lot of people don't know RMF and CSFC, no? Accreditation, no? There's a paper trail part of it, all this. Uh, cybersecurity, uh, so you guys earlier were just talking about red team, blue team, all great, right? Great stuff. There's a roll up your sleeves and hackathons and hack and certified ethical hackers, but in the government systems, even in corporate systems, there's a policy piece to it as well. Someone needs to validate a given computer system that says, I will lock if somebody uh, leaves the desk or takes their heart token with them to the NFC, the system will lock in 15 seconds. Well, who makes sure the system is locking behind them? Um, CompuSec, right? I think that's our slide. Your first slide was talking about InfoSec. That's almost a CompuSec. That's also a cybersecurity function. What RMF is, Risk Management Framework, and you guys can Google that. It's from uh, NIST, National Institute of uh, Standards Technology. It basically says there are over 1,000 plus security controls a given system should go through. 
we start out by analyzing the system. We sit down with the business team and talk about what their business goals are. Depending on the business goal, the sensitivity of the data is tagged. In the unclassified level, we tag sensitive information in the government space as controlled unclassified information. People back in the day used to call it FOUO, basically all your sensitive stuff. Corporates also use, Bank of America uses the RMF framework of NIST to protect their system. So there's a whole process in all that, right? What I'm saying is there's a paper part of it, it's boring. It is very boring. And if you are 21 and older and you had a, a red wine, or a dry wine, that's what it is. It's boring part, but it gets interesting when you tie it to what you guys do every day in cybersecurity. It shows the process behind it, okay? Who do we work with? I'm just gonna, oh, back. How do I go back? Just arrow. I'll figure it out. The computer guy can figure something out, right? All right. <laughs> Commercial companies right now, guys, we're not that big, by the way. Like that's your, we're uh, we're about uh, 75 uh, uh, employees. I think I have some slides to talk about that, but we're not. I'm not in hundreds of employees yet, right? So I just wanted to share that up front. Um, commercial companies and government companies, just some of our partners that we work with, uh, Worldwide Technology, uh, they're all over the, all over the world. Uh, Booz Allen Hamilton, you may have heard of them. I used to work for them a long time ago. ECS Federal, all three of them are uh, over. We have a lot of other commercial company. We just wanted to highlight uh, the industries that is over a billion dollar. Uh, so the, the, all of them are over a billion dollar company. Uh, and then some of the core uh, government clients, I can't see from that far, so I'll get closer, right? We got Department of Veteran Affairs in your top left, and it's going down to the right. Uh, uh, DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency, FBI, I will be visiting them ne next week. Uh, very prestigious clients of ours. Um, Department of Defense, bottom left, just defense in general. Uh, but within defense, we have a, a active, gigs going on with the Air Force, and then uh, last but not least, NSA. Well, I didn't know we had a picture of Angel. Where to go? Emerging tech difference. We make tailored solutions, right, to meet our clients' need. Tailored. Uh, we, in cybersecurity area, we, so what I always say, IT has to be connected at all times, right? In cybersecurity, you're passing data, but cybersecurity guys should not be working by themselves. There's a system engineering team. There's a business analyst team. Any system that is being put together, if you do not sit down with the business team or someone does not understand the requirement and the engineers do not build in accordance to the requirements and the cybersecurity guys do not protect based on the layered security that is needed, just enough security, not the Silicon Valley guys. Anybody heard of Palo Alto? Yeah, anybody worked with them before? No? Yeah, you have? You have used their stuff? Next time you see them say, set, set, go pound, whatever, right? <laughs> I'm giving Palo Alto example because I've attended many seminars from Palo Alto. They're a perfect example of why do I need ex uh, extra software or hardware? What we teach when I say tailor, just enough is all you need. Overdoing of anything is bad. In today's industry, after all the hacks that's going on, whether it's a hack in the hospital or the gas leak or a wanna cry hack that happened or the OPM hack, what are we doing in the United States in generally speaking and corporates? We're just putting, we take the lock down and we put a bigger lock. Then we take the bigger lock down then we put a bigger lock. If there was a hack going on in this area, we're just gonna put like six different doors, that's it. Is that, a, is that a cybersecurity practice? Who came up with that? It's the old school way of doing things, right? It's almost like if you played any video games, the castles are getting attacked. Let's put a big iron wall. Okay, let them go through this. Okay, let's put another iron wall. Wrong approach. And that's why I give Paul Alto example because they're firewalls. They just keep building robust firewall. We have to talk about in cyber, not just hacks from an outside, insider threats. 
what happens when I go rogue? I worked for three years building to the right of the guy that most of you guys should have heard of, Edward Snowden, yes? NSA, yeah? I worked one building over, not trying to say I'm all that, but what I'm trying to share with you, part of my job was I've, been, I've always been in defense. One of the things that we implemented uh, there that I can share at the unclass level is a good insider threat program, right? If it's 6.30, Anton's supposed to be clocked out and went home every day, we have a tool. Why is Anton still logged in? Alert goes into the system. System sends the alert to the boss, and the boss happened to be on hell. And Hell says, yeah, I have approved Anton over time. He should be leaving 7.30 today. Anton better leave at 7.30. If he doesn't clock out of that system and it's 7.35, for that five minutes, when he comes the next morning, he's sitting in a conference room and explaining what was he doing additional in that five minutes. Cybersecurity things. That's how, this is the aftermath of Edward Snowden, right? It's, I'm just giving you that example of it. There's a, a lot of other examples that go with it, but that's just one, one area. So that's tailored solutions. What I was getting back to this is you have to sit down, understand the requirement before you build it, and just give them enough. Too much cybersecurity hinders the customer experience, and that is what's happening today. Where? Right not far from one of our clients, Veteran Affairs. Uh, if you guys uh, uh, drive around, probably seen the medical center of VA. We're hoping to do some work in future with Sh Shans and others. Talking about this, what does emerging tech bring to the commercial front with your help? We'll be understanding their current posture and saying, why do you have so many locks? You pay us so much money and we're actually saving you money because we're going to be, the first thing we're going to do is strip down all the products you have and only put just enough you need for your data. Why does Shans need to put more layers of security than the CIA to protect their top secret data? Because they don't know. They don't even know. Folks don't even know how many logical ports are still open, right? How's the data coming through? Just don't know it, okay? Uh, here in Gainesville, we wanted to, we haven't done this work here. We're actually kickstarting a lot of R&D ideas. Uh, as I shared a moment ago, I'm prior military, Air Force. What I'm doing, when I look at each, each of you guys, you know, I'm seeing myself when I was joining the military, you know, between the age of, I was 19, but I know you guys are older than 19, but some of you guys may be uh, still 19. I had something that you guys don't have at that time. I had the entire federal government's databases and systems and training. I was equipped with different tools. I was trained on those tools and mythology behind them. And I could ask all the questions before I was deployed. This is an equipped, trained, deployed. So when I was pitching the idea to Matt in January about all these concepts, like, can we do this? Like, yeah, sure, why not? So that's the idea. The internship idea that we're talking about here that Angel is following, Anton's part of it, is truly that. We want to equip you with this. We want to train with my old school of some mythologies. But today, the world of YouTube, with the help of YouTube and your new tools, let's talk about it. In my industry that I'm in, in cyber, or I would say IT in general, there are so many Tom, Dick, and Harry, as we say, are coming and getting the job right away. They have no idea what they're being. Wouldn't it be nice to know what you're working on before you get there? Wouldn't it be nice to know, have that feeling that I'm actually trained. I'm trained to do this before I get on. It's almost like getting on a, I rode a motorcycle. I had to get a training and a license before I got on. I just didn't get on a motorcycle. So why, why in IT? So we're doing R&D and uh, 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 very uh, open innovation environment. Uh, I do want to share in R&D a little one thing about ET that's important to me is we have a structured organization as a company, but we also work as a flat. What do I mean by flat? Because I'm a cyber guy, intern can be stuck somewhere, they can just IM me saying, hey, Seth, I have a question for you. Matter of fact, if you go on LinkedIn and you connect with me, you'll see me as a principal engineer. You will not see me as a president or CEO. Those are just title on a paper. I still have a profession, what I do, right? So that's what I mean by flat. And that's another thing that I, I learned in the military, that ranks are important, but if someone has the knowledge, you can ping them and get the information. 
very different from other branches. Maybe that was the Air Force way of doing things. Um, uh, organizations do not do that today. How many people in Apple could say, oh yeah, I could just ping Steve Jobs and say, oh yeah, dude, can you help me out here? Probably not, definitely not. Okay, well, somebody put a map. Why, why us, right? I'm here to pitch myself, so continuing on. We're Gainesville based now. Company is officially moved, like I said, uh, in April. We actually not just moved uh, our company, we literally transitioned. So in the records of Florida, it shows up as we were always uh, Florida based from 2015. There's a lot of paperwork. Uh, I talk about on the administrative business side, I consider our, ourselves as a divided states of America, not united, because every state is practically running its own uh, country uh, in many administrative ways. It's, it's hard. It's very hard. Uh, we're Gainesville base. We're a technology center. You can work part-time, work after class, work before class, work on weekends. You can take some concepts, work in the evenings. The idea is you're learning, you're learning. Many of our interns do not make any tangible uh, impact right away. Many of them, Angel can probably tell you what he did for three months, did he make a big impact? Not initially, now he is in second time. So it's, it's so point I'm trying to make is that it's not that I have a playbook ready to go saying, you're gonna come here, you're gonna do this, 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 this. Every individual, just like how we do tailored solution for the customer, it's a tailored internship program for you. Some of you guys, uh, sir, you may be advanced level in something, and ma'am, you may be not so advanced in something. So depending on it, we sit down, okay, skip. Everybody doesn't need to go to, every individual has their own trajectory. It is your own race. I'm not gonna put you on a track and saying, okay, you have to wear the shoes and do it. So that's how we make it tailored to you. Um, and the goal is over time, internships turn it into a full-time employee. When you become a full-time employee, actually you, you can make a, a, a difference, uh, make a change and a difference, uh, an impact in your first three months. But of course our goal is to become an employee uh, for, for a long time. An impactful project. There are projects that you can talk about it. There will be a project that you can't talk about it certain classified project, you know, to your significant other, to your mom and dad, what did you work on today? Sorry, pops, you don't have need to know. What does that mean? I took an oath, you just don't have it, right? Then there are cool projects. Um, another cool project I can share with you, uh, when I was doing some coding, um, I programmed in a, in a project. There's a cover terms, by the way, anybody watch Top Gun movies, yeah? Top Gun movies, yeah, a little bit, yeah. That's one of them. There's a lot of military-based movies have cover terms in general. There's a cover term for a project called Bulletproof that I worked on. Everything I'm sharing is unclass level, by the way. Uh, uh, in that project, uh, this is 2003. This is before you had your iPhone. doesn't come out till 2008. A project where there are three different types of unmanned air vehicles, UAVs by the Air Force, Predator, Global Hawk, and U-2. They're flying over and there are two, uh, two planes that go over and they're taking pictures. They're taking three to five pictures every second. You can imagine how fast it is. Those pictures turn into targets. And then the, after the two planes take the targets, 30 minutes later, two more planes are going and they're just dropping bombs. And we coded for that. Could you imagine how precise the location had to be in the military grid? If we were supposed to blow up just this area, we, we cannot damage this because that's where the civilians are. That's where the bad guys are. Uh, so we did coding like this. Now I'm sharing this with you because I, this happened in 2004, 2003 to five time frame. I'm in 2022. I'll be getting goosebumps, maybe if I'm alive still in 2040s. Impactful project to you, not to the world. Folks, about I would say 10 years ago, I don't know if it's still true or not, I hope not in your age group, uh, used to be motivated by a bump in their pay, okay? 
This is a Silicon Valley example, another one, you know. Pay me 5,000 more, I come work for you, Apple. Uh, Google, pay me 15,000 more, I work for you. Oh, Elon Musk, give me another 20K and throw in a Tesla, I work for you. It still happens today, possibly, but that was mainly what's happening. Today, your age group, uh, I have a son, he's 10 year old, even his group, you guys are motiv motivated by satisfaction, a job satisfaction, which once again varies amongst everyone, right? I'm hoping that some of the project that you guys could be able to work with us, maybe you're satisfied like I am with the impactful difference. Of course, everyone's getting paid. Everyone's paid. And this, this is not a free internship. I was just sharing with you that, that people are motivated by different things. I'm still motivated by impactful project. And plus, I look at it, us or myself, another computer guy joke. I look at myself as a machine. Okay? A machine over the years got more ramps and more things, and eventually it's going to be end of life. It's going to be unplugged, right? A little sentimental, philosophical thing, but a machine, did the machine do its job right? What was it designed to send on Earth? Well, this machine is built with AI, so it has to come up with its own way of saying, what did you do on this Earth? So that's what my impact is all about. I want to grow the ET. I want to grow with it, knowledge that I have. If I'm able to pass it to Angel and Anton and 10 others, my request would be, gentlemen, pass it to 10 more, 15 more, 30 more. Big picture, I already gave you the Silicon Valley. Big picture is, I want to figure out us Americans who are sitting in America right now, right? We're all here. How could we truly outsource us to India, to China? There's a lot of them come here. I didn't come here to that, but people come here. Why not? Well, guess, guess in which field we could do that? In yours, guys. I don't know if you know that. Cybersecurity, there is no number one country than us. Yes, Russian hackers, Chinese try to hack us. But we, we talk about defending us. We have all kinds of gadgets to get to them too. Sometimes they think they're hacking us, but they're just in a honeypot. They're, they think they got the real data. No, they didn't. That's something we did in 1970. So it's, that's one of my dreams to figure out how to do that. And I just said, India, I don't want to go that far. I was joking with Angel. I'm like, can we get to South America? Can we go help South Americans out? How to do cybersecurity better? At which level? Corporations are great, but I want to improve the government. I believe if the government is secure, then the corporations can learn from the government. Department of Defense example that I gave you, there's a lot of concept that we work on uh, that I'm also showing in the lab that are uh, defense-based, but the corporates use, right? Anybody know where the internet come from? Who created the internet? Anybody knows? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Al Gore, yes. No, I think it was George Bush Sr., you know? DARPA project, yeah. But do you know where, in which, uh, uh, which branch? United States Army. So if, if the internet was created by the defense guys, who do you think know most about the internet? The defense guys. Did they build a backdoor internet? Is there a such, such call? There was a South Park episode I watched once. Somebody unplugged the power saying the internet is down if you watched it. It's quite funny. Uh, I think Cartman did it. But uh, is there such thing? Can you U.S. unplug? Is U.S. actually monitoring every single nodes out there? I don't know. There's lots of questions, right? But I want to share them. And I'm known to go off slides, by the way. All right, we have a picture of us too? All right. Oh, I need to go back to, again. How can I join? Uh, this, how can I join slide? Potential cybersecurity employment, internship, contract work options, remote work. We have a... a our internship, sometimes when you do an internship with us, we get some client project where we're authorized to bring on almost like an understudy, right, as a helping hand. So you get to work on some real world prog uh, problems as well. Another thing I'm trying to create in Florida, it's almost like on-demand service. Uh, uh, and I, this is a, a cheesy example, probably a bad example, but I'll give it anyway. Um, 
I call ourselves in cyber the plumbers for data. Looks like, wow, that's very bad. Uh, anybody know how expensive plumbers are per hour? No, any clue? Well, in my state where I come from, Maryland, they charge about 500 to 750 each hour when they come to you when you have a pipe leaks. They come out, they fix the pipes, they take the leak, and they take two grand from you, okay? And then the joke is they fix one leak, but they leave two, two leaks behind, so they keep coming back. But um, I, I'm giving the example because if you, ever, if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to see how the houses are built and how the water pipes are run, how the hot, hot, wire come, hot water comes in, cold water comes in, and then the, the sewage goes out and all that, the whole water pipe. I'm giving you that because that's how our data is connected. And that's why I said plumber uh, uh, example, because when the cybersecurity guys are activated as a incident threat response team, we do charge five to $700 an hour for our service to fight and do it. But no one does it from the engineering angle that I'm also teaching. I'm saying that wouldn't it be nice to know all the houses in Gainesville, pretend they're all a bunch of systems, enterprise system. Wouldn't it be nice, what's the generic way that they're all set up? How are the water pipes actually working? How is the data actually moving? So we talk about, in cybersecurity angle, we talk about ports protocol. We talk about architectures. Uh, I, I teach architecture frameworks. Uh, what's the difference between a physical architecture and a logical architecture? And how does the data nodes pass through? Um, yeah, all right. I think last slide was just questions. You guys have any questions? I thought, Anton, we had slides for them to apply at positions, no? Did we? No, we didn't. Okay. Yeah, that'd be a uh, that'd be a great thing if you guys can if you all have a LinkedIn profile, uh, follow us. But I'll open it up to any questions. Yeah, go ahead. Technology, like you mean by software or. Uh, depending on the internship type, right, as an individual, like we have a uh, uh, technology, like we have a cloud computing systems, right? We have accounts on um, uh, AWS, uh, uh, Microsoft, Google from the cloud side. Uh, we are, we don't have it built yet. I'm looking for a cybersecurity professional to come help me build, like to build a cyber range. So the technology would be my old school frameworks that I have. Would love to build a cybersecurity range. See if you guys are up for it, right? And uh, things like that. Uh, sorry, sir, go ahead. Oh, wow. Well, what do you mean? So, what tools are you comfortable with using? Like, one I learned more about you. Or what technology do you use? Like, personally, things that I get paid with it would be the DCG, the Green Shield Facilitation Certification Center, or Okay, I, I don't list out the tools because I don't have all the tools in my fingertips. I talk about frameworks then less than a tool because tools could go in hundreds of tools. And even when, when you ask me the question, what technology, I, I don't even have the answer to that Like because I don't even know the proper definition of technology. I'll give you an example. There's an app that we were working on uh, past internship uh, that we didn't close out where we're de defining it, uh, get glossary of emerging technology. We were actually trying to create a glossary. So somebody says, what technology? Can someone define the word technology, right? In, in which context? Because it has such a broad context to it, right? So um, uh, we're still working on that app, but we have the definition. Go ahead, sir. I have a question for uh, you Sure, yeah. Actually, right. um, without giving away any classified information, um, what is something interesting that you think is going on right now uh, in your brain? Uh, there's a great group about it. We just keep going to open up the product line. Uh, we do have some targets. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about that, but 
uh, we were thinking about doing it here. Uh, right now, I'm taking the interview by Dr. Ryan over here. Uh, we got a couple of other people. Um, Eric Kokomoto is one of our senior engineers who's been talking about it. And I don't think they're not here today. Uh, they are a big Apache developer. But uh, we're looking right now um, actually about a month out of the software idea. Um, we're looking into RFID technology right now. So we're taking it into that thing. I don't want to be too much away from it. I mean, one of the new ideas, <laughs> but uh, uh, we're doing a lot of RFID research uh, right now in the field. We're looking into building a hash to do a minimum viable data point around maybe like a year, maybe October. Uh, we're looking to have something done by November. Uh, of course, we're keeping it at least on December, at least for another year or so. Uh, but one of the coolest things, and I feel like we've done in this time of thinking of where we're going to come in with a lot of history, because I don't come from the financial world. I'm a software developer. I'm a software developer. Honestly, more of a web developer, not a financial developer. You know, I'm always thinking about this new stuff that, you know, like QuickBooks came out, you know, I'm all that all day. Uh, Kyber 3, like, I only heard about the Uber app, like, recently. You know what I mean? Uh, not just talking about that now. I thought it was funny that they uh, hired an infinite response senior, like, manager. After they got hacked by those hacking companies, so I thought that was hilarious. So you guys didn't know. Um, but yeah, we used to do a lot of interview messaging. Um, I think one of your questions is SCAP. SCAP? SCAP. SCAP. Uh, SCAP Compliance Checker, SCC. No, no, go ahead. This is open forum. I, I can talk to you about it a little bit. Uh, we have a, we brought in, um, I've never touched any medical device, full disclosure, before I started the concept, but it was always fascinating to me. What got me into it, another personal thing, and everything started with the personal for me. I'm a sentimental guy. I, I have lost a lot of friends in the military and war, so over the years, I've become more sentimental. Um, when you took OPM hack, you took my social security number, you mean the bad guys, I was okay with it. You took my money from the bank. I wasn't okay, but I was still okay because I was FDIC insured. I got my money back. But when you talk about, and I did a study this with Mayo Clinic, when you talk about hacking a medical device and I can take human life while they're, like that medical device is the only thing that putting air in their mouth, right? Or, or the system to infusion pump medication, I'm not okay with it and I will never be okay with it. So what we did, that was the idea, right? So what we did was we brought in a lot of biomedical engineers, internship first, everything's been internships. And uh, uh, we bought some medical devices and we started playing with it. What could we do? Like playing with it almost like a, no different than a high school playing guys. Anybody dissected a frog or a pig, anything in high school? You guys remember that? We started like that guys, dissection. Dissection one-on-one, -on -one. come on. Let's unscrew this and figure out what's inside, hardware-wise. We found out some device we just couldn't unscrew. They were just soldered. We can do it. Uh, we also learned that most of the medical device operating systems are using real-time operating systems or they're Linux-based. Hey, game on, man. Open source? Anybody securing them? Anybody scanning them? We found out there is no such thing called biomedical cybersecurity. What? Like, what do, what do you do, biomedical engineers? Oh, yeah, we, after we graduate, we're either helping the vendors make new products to get FDA approved, or we're in the hospitals when the products are not functioning. We do some tweaking to make it function. Like, okay, who talks about when's the last time this medical device was patched or scanned for configuration? I don't know. What do you look for? Once it's powered on, I just test basic things the FDA gave me. As long as it does it, I'm it's good enough. So 
we, we got some devices, we play with it. We also sent some email to Baxter, Medtronic. We heard nothing back. Uh, so we decided stop the actual testing of the device. So we paused it. Uh, we, we hired a, a lead integrator. Um, Matt was just on a call with him today. And we're actually building a framework that if a medical device is a computer system, which many of them are, computational system, right? What should we do? What should be done? So we're building this, that framework on it right now. Uh, we're hoping that after the framework is built, we're not gonna go far, guys. I, uh, I'm gonna talk to, I made some friends, uh, some friends from my home country in India. There are many of them are doctors here, you know, also. I'm playing cricket with them on Saturday. So I'm hoping to leverage them. Those, I met two of them who are uh, uh, cardi uh, um, uh, cardiologists. That's my target. I don't want to target any device but CDMS, cardiac device monitoring system, pacemakers and stuff like that. Important, two most important part for me, right? Heart and the brain. Go ahead, sir. But what's exciting to me is I talked to four different people in four different states this afternoon, right? And I was just jerking and I was kind of following the jerk because all of them were sitting at home wearing a t-shirt and working on a project that they're excited about for one of the alphabet boys at the best known thing. So, you know, for a company, it's really exciting. I come from a real estate background where it's hyper local. You have to work in the area you live in. You have to you have to live in the area you work in, and this is exciting to me because I'm working with people that are in 15, 20 different states on a daily basis that are working on projects that they're excited about that may not be in the state they're in, but it doesn't matter. So they get to work wherever they want, and they get to live wherever they want, and and do what they want without having to worry about you know is that company here or is that government agency here, and so I think that's really exciting. I think that's it's important to me. I, I know that I would like to be able to move where I want uh, without worrying about, you know, is there a job there? So. And we have that on on demand model all the time. We move people around if uh, certain folks like I moved here. Now we're against war base, but I will ship myself out to do a project in some other state for two, three months. Then, then we come back home. Almost that model, because the idea, like you said, it's not why do we have to send guys? Why does the cybersecurity or system engineer guys? Go need to sit with the Air Force client for a year. When your job is done, your job is done. You come out. And it also saves government a lot of money. Ma'am, you had a question. Oh, yeah. I think that's related to like working where you live, living where you work. Um, John June said, in particular, are your internships uh, remote or hybrid friendly? Or are your primary internships here? Like, you have to be in here in the in Gainesville area to be um, interned by you? No. Uh, there, uh, we have remote internship also. I only ask for folks to come initially because this is the, I'm saying the old school, the new way. I'm old school. I like to do FaceTime, guys. You know, I, I want to see because if I'm talking to you on a, I still do whiteboard. Yes, I can do everything to teams, but on help, I'm like, that's you and a marker. Yes, I'm going to draw something on the marker because I want to see how engaged you are. Still today, humans, our nonverbals speak louder than our verbals. So I can sense, are you picking it up? Are you not picking it up for those reasons? So initially we ask people to come but then uh, folks can graduate into a remote, uh, but hybrid is open today for sure. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Wow, <laughs> Matt, do you want to, Matt, do you want to talk about the differences? So, uh, oh, it was a busy lifestyle, right? I, uh, I have uh, traveled in a bus, commuter bus, or in a car every day, about four hours of travel time, right? Wasting four hours in traveling. You know, we don't have that here, okay? Random winter summers are crazy. As you grew up there, I grew up there area. I was there. 
12 years. So it's different. From a business side, that's a personal. And by the way, weather does affect your productivity. I must say. I must say, right? I am uh, I on a personal front. I, my stomach went in a little bit. Hopefully, one day I get to a flat, complete flat stomach. I'm hoping Florida will give me that. Maryland would have never not gone there. On the business side, over there, there's so many of them. Within that uh, 15, 20 miles radius, there's so many IT consultants companies. Believe it or not, over 2,500 of them. Just 10 miles. All they're doing, about 95% of them, either reselling someone's product. Palo Alto charges 20 bucks. Buy from me for 35. No, buy from me for 32. Reseller of product or they're winning some gigs and they find a bunch of people saying, okay, put 10 people there. Uh, you make $50, they make $70 off of you. That type of environment versus gains will. So this is my individual experience. I only been in April. Matt can tell you all about it because he literally <laughs> grew up here <laughs> about the culture of gains will. What I saw, in Gainesville, folks are very welcoming. You know, everyone is. They're not, they're treating me as a human, right? I shake hands, I meet people, even in restaurants. They're very approachable. So because of that, from a business perspective, I'm coming to this, because humans' personalities, over there, they're machines, where I come from. They're just like, I'm here to do this thing. I don't have time for this. I get my coffee, I'm out. Over here, what's going on? How's everyone doing? Let's talk. So it's, a lot of collaborative environment. That's one of the reasons why we came here because it makes business sense. Remember I said earlier in my presentation, I was looking for a developing area. Gainesville is not fully developed. University of Florida is not fully developed. I mean, the leadership was here like, what are you talking about? They're not it compared to many universities in the world. But let's, let's go. Right? <laughs> Here's a business answer. Former board member of Start GMP. Uh, I've been involved with the startup scene in Gainesville for a long time. And what I would think, because I do have a lot of friends and family in the DC area, uh, it seems like you know you can have a great idea in DC and uh, or in Maryland. Still want to get people the food, right? But I think in Gainesville, if you have an idea, you can talk to people about it. One, I've never, ever heard of somebody stealing a, an idea a few years ago. It's never had it happen. And I've sat in rooms where just with 15 people, and people come up and mention their great idea, and nobody seems to say, like, you know, maybe so is a good idea. And two, people seem to want to help you. So, like, oh, well, you need to talk to so and so, and you need to talk to so and so. And my DC would love that and would want to talk, would want to talk to you. And so, I think you're stepping on it. I think the collaboration is more here than what you're going to see in a more uh, developed area. Developed, yeah. Uh, because everybody here is kind of, kind of has a scrappy startup mentality. Right now. So, you had a question, Richard. Go ahead. What type of techniques you said? What student candidates? Wow, all and all and all, asterisk dot asterisk, man. Anybody can apply, anybody can apply. I don't sit on the boards of internship selection program. I have a dedicated uh, talent uh, acquisition specialist team led by uh, 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 a, a, a person and um, uh, Matt oversees that uh, process as well. So they look for certain things, right? What I look for, and I'm, I, what I can give you straight up, that's probably not even brought up in the interviews, what they look for, it's attitude. Very, very honest, attitude. You bring, all, you bring all your attitude with you and we will give you the aptitude is what I always say, Matt. Yeah.
that's confusing, right? Uh, I do not, as I didn't say, I don't know what the important is, but it does. Um, but, but we're not looking for any in particular, you know, if you have an interest right now, if that's something we're working on, just call us today. Um, so if somebody comes along and says, hey, I'm in school for healthcare and I already have a strong industry interest in healthcare, well, then you have hands on experience with delivery. Is this, you know, is this anything else? Yeah, you guys talked about red team. Yeah, you guys talked about your red team, blue teams, guys, right? I'm interesting to know, and I'll be working with your president, hoping to see more of your work in the background to see, you know, who has captured the flag the fastest and what were they doing, except Are you going to select the person who captured the flag? Believe it or not, many times I have, I have brought in a person who didn't capture the flag, but their work was more interesting on how they were going about and capturing the flag versus the person who captured it. So like you said, the answer to the question is out there, but the overall idea of your internship should be, you do something interesting that interests you and you keep doing that up to the point that it doesn't interest you. Angel is probably doing three different things. Anton is probably doing three different things. That's the whole idea. You start out with your primary, then you have your secondary B, and then you have another Charlie C treasury, right? Three things simultaneously because that's how you are. That's how I was. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wish people gave me the options. So we're opening the options for you and then you select it. And then the goal is that one thing, that one thing you become a SME in, subject matter expert. He said, no matter what, bring on anybody from any part of the world. They better beat me in that thing. That's my thing, right? That's the goal. And when you find that thing, then we say, okay, you know what? You're part of this team. Let's go. All right, any other questions? Sir? Sure. Uh, we took some slides out. We had some boring business slides that we took out, Anton, but uh, uh, I'll talk to you about two parts and then I'll turn it over to Matt. The company was founded uh, uh, funded by uh, me. I put in a lot of money. I've saved a lot of money for 15, 20 years. And I started the company uh, in 2015. So uh, that's how we started. Our growth, we have been tripling in size um, uh, in past three years. Uh, like I said, we're still uh, 70, 70 employees. Our trajectory is to cross 100 this year. And uh, uh, before 2023, we'll be 500. When I give you the number of 500 employee, it's key to know that 80% to 90% of our employees are always doing some fun stuff. Then we keep our 10% to 15% of backend support stuff. In many IT company, look it up, 40% support personnel, 60% of actual work. Matt, you wanna help out? <laughs> um, uh, so we, we don't have any any funding. Uh, we have no intention of uh, seeking funding. Um, it's not necessary for our business. Um, and you know, I, if you want to talk about that separately, I'm happy to talk to you about it just because I have experience in some of that. But um, but our growth becomes really becomes really about the need for extra funding. Um, there is the there is the side of our business for contracting and subcontracting that is labor intensive for our very small support staff, um, but is quite lucrative. So that, that allows us to have the fun side of cybersecurity. And we also bring funds in other area. I talked about R&D, uh, uh, federal government. I am keep giving you guys the example of government because they are my primary customers. Corporates, we're not going in any corporates yet to help them out. But through the governments, the next big thing for us, it's really the hospital. That's another reason. Uh, Gainesville is a biotech hub in many areas of why I came here. Uh, one fun funding vehicle that comes to us from a research side, it's what a small business call IR, Innovation Research, SBIR program, SDTR programs. We submit paper. Those are quite fun because you get funding for three months. And it works out perfect as uh, Angel was giving you an example of one of the projects he's on. The goal is, right, do the internship for part of your semester or six months or three months. We work with you. So you feel like, okay, I started something. 
I got somewhere and I finished something. It's almost like finishing a season one of some TV series and I know what season two is going to bring, right? It's almost like that. Any other questions? Grab the water. Like we're turning out emerging tech so far. I started in the summer with Hot Hell. Um, one of the things my boss is really telling me is, like, Anton, do you want to work on this? Because they really want you to be working on projects that are interesting to them. Like, you actually want to work on them. You know, he's like, he really does. Do you want to work on the project you're actually putting in your own work? You know, you'll be really excited about that and sound a good product, which I think is important. And I, I'm sure we're all always open to new ideas that you guys want to do. Like. All right, no other questions, right? Well, I thank you for your time and appreciate you guys allowing us to speak with you guys. A uh, favor would be connect with us on LinkedIn, follow some stuff over there, and uh, I think we have some food for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, guys, we have a lot of chicken. We have some potato wedges, lots of sauce, um, lots of beverages. You guys can line up. We only have smaller plates, but there's a lot. So feel free to come back after if you still want some more. Um, this actually looks like a powder. Oh. I think it's like. Okay, that would be All right. So. So that's what it's saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Using Just make sure to use a napkin when you grab the chicken tenders. That's all. That's a huge deal. I mean, we're going to eat enough for the player. Absolutely. I think we do. Yeah, I was there.